nach Herzenslust herumtollen. Nicht nur Katzen und Hunde sind verspielt, überraschend viele andere Tiere sind es auch. When you start to consider weird sorts of behavior exhibited by lots of kinds of animals, you suddenly realize that things like play occur all over the animal kingdom. Tiere suchen sich verblüffende Spielgefährten. Uns Menschen zum Beispiel. There is something in our deeply rooted nature that is able to communicate with a whole range of life on this on this planet. Spielen liegt in unserer Natur. As the most adaptive species in the world, we play, and we play more than any other species if we allow ourselves. Spielen hat auf uns Menschen eine erstaunlich positive Wirkung. I actually started to read the literature, and what I read blew my mind. Spielen wirkt sich positiv auf unser Gehirn aus. Und je riskanter das Spiel, desto besser. Es war ein schleichender Prozess und blieb weitgehend unbeachtet. In den letzten 30 Jahren haben Kinder in Nordamerika und Europa nach und nach aufgehört, im Freien zu spielen. Heute verbringen Kinder in England nur noch halb so viel Zeit in der Natur wie ihre Eltern früher. Technik ist zum neuen Spielkameraden geworden. Diesen Trend sehen viele Experten mit Sorge. Erkenntnisse aus der Tierwelt zeigen, spielerisches Herumtollen kann klüger, mutiger und vielleicht sogar liebenswürdiger machen. You ready, Cookie? You ready? Stuart Brown ist ein Pionier der Spielforschung. Seit mehr als 50 Jahren wirbt er für die Vorzüge des Spielens. If you look at the overall place of play in the world of animal play, you begin to see that it is as present as sleep and dreams. Brown zufolge ist der Spieltrieb wichtig für die Entwicklung eines Tieres. So wichtig, dass er eine eigene nonverbale Sprache besitzt. <lacht> When two dogs want to play, what you see is dog-dog play language. If it was aggressive, and they were fighting, they'd have an entirely different body language. <laughs> That's paw slap, paw slap, which is typical play activity from a dog. Part of animal play, and part of the reason it is so compelling, is that it's pure and everybody gets it. Now look at that, play bow. You know, it's instinctive. And we're wired the same way, you know, same, same part of our brain. Brown hat überzeugende Beweise zusammengetragen. Sie zeigen, Spielen ist mehr als körperliche Bewegung. Es trainiert auch den Geist. One of the things that keeps play going, that they know how to do instinctively, they will keep the play going without one dominating the other. And that is one of the essences of play. It's infectious. Here we got four of them now. Here we go. Wir erkennen, wenn unsere Haustiere spielen. Aber was ist Spielen eigentlich genau? Die Antwort kennt Gordon Burgert. Er erforscht das Verhalten von Tieren aus dem Blickwinkel der Evolution. I'm uh, primarily a reptile. Ethologist, reptile behavior person, and I've always liked snakes and lizards and turtles. And uh, years ago, articles came out about play, and I thought, well, I never even saw anything that would consider play in a reptile. Dass Säugetiere und Vögel spielen, weiß die Wissenschaft schon seit langem. Aber Spiele bei Tieren zu erkennen, die sich langsam bewegen, ist nicht so leicht. 
a dog wagging its tail or monkeys or chips responding to tickling and so on. That's sort of something we can easily identify. Hey, that seems to be playful, pleasurable, fun to the animal. Uh, it's hard to do that with a turtle. So we need more objective criteria. And I came up with five different groups, I might say five criteria of, of play. Damit ein Verhalten als Spiel gilt, darf es keinem ersichtlichen Zweck folgen. Es muss wiederholt werden. Immer wieder. Manchmal sogar geradezu übertrieben. Das Verhalten muss spontan sein. Und das Tier darf nicht gestresst sein. Burgard definierte diese Kriterien, nachdem er entdeckt hatte, dass auch Reptilien spielen können. Hi. Hi, girl. Now she's gonna go back and maybe grab something in my pocket. That's what they like to do. Er entdeckte Spielverhalten bei der größten Echsenart der Welt, dem giftigen Komodo-Waran. They can bring down a water buffalo. This is not something many people ever get to see. Well, sometimes play is uh, confused with exploration. One of the uh, ways of telling the difference is that exploration is you're just checking out something. What you do with it is now play. Hey, there's a box. Hey, girl. Here she goes. Reptiles operate at a little slower pace than we do, but she has all the important elements. This is behavior that uh, is part of their normal repertoire. She'll do this over and over again. It's a behavior in an animal that we consider in a relaxed state. It's a behavior that's voluntary. Another confusion may be, well, maybe the animal is just stupid enough and thinks it's food, and it's acting as if it's prey. That is clearly not the case either, because the animal doesn't try to eat the object. Hey, that was pretty good. Pretty good girl. Bye, girl. Auf der Basis von Burgers Erkenntnissen konnten Wissenschaftler belegen, dass alle Lebewesen spielen. Sogar Fische haben ab und zu Spaß am Ballspielen. Die Wissenschaft befördert ständig neue Überraschungen zutage. Nicht nur darüber, welche Tiere spielen, sondern auch, mit wem sie es tun. Ein Beispiel dafür ist dieser pazifische Riesenkrake. Eigentlich ist er ein Einzelgänger. Seit einem Jahr ist er in Seattle zu Hause. Hier hat er eine unerwartete Freundin gefunden. Just watching an octopus move is so graceful and so beautiful. You can spend so much time just sitting there and watching them and just being mesmerized by the way that they move and they interact with their environment. We're here to make sure their enclosures are clean, um, we take care of them, and so it's kind of a day-to-day -day cleaning and feeding. Doch eines Tages wurde aus schnödem Putzen überraschenderweise mehr. It began with uh, the simple task of cleaning the windows, so 
um, we get water droplets on the top edge of our acrylic there and we have to clean those off so that we can provide a good viewing experience for the public. And I was up there spraying it off with a freshwater hose. And the animals started to reach out of the water and kind of grab for the fresh water that was dripping down. And I was like, well, that's unusual. I've never seen that before. And so I actually just went ahead and sprayed the animal with the hose. And the animal completely went upside down and just started to come out of the water and kind of move around and hung around for a couple of minutes. I mean, there's a lot of animals that have no interest in humans whatsoever and actively swim away from you, but these animals come to us and interact with us. Sobald nicht mehr gesprüht wurde, spritzte der Krake zurück. Es war die Geburtsstunde eines Spiels. Was hat es mit dem Spielen auf sich, wenn es selbst die Kluft zwischen einem einsamen Meeresbewohner und einem Menschen überwindet? Type of questions that we really don't have answers to yet, and show that there is something in our deeply rooted nature that has, is able to communicate in some level with a whole range of life on this on this planet. Handyvideos in den sozialen Medien liefern uns ständig neue Hinweise auf artenüberschreitendes Spiel. Manchmal ist es verblüffend, welche Spielgefährten zueinander finden. Im Tierreich kennt der Impuls, Spaß zu haben, offenbar keine Grenzen. In der Wilhelma in Stuttgart leben Tiere, die dafür bekannt sind, miteinander zu spielen. Bonobos. Bei ihnen albern nicht nur die Jungtiere herum. Die italienische Primatenforscherin Elisabetta Palagi ist hier, um die gefährdete Art zu erforschen. Bonobos are our closest living relatives and uh, they can give us a lot of information about the evolution of our behavior. Die Tiere haben nicht nur Freude am Spiel. Palagi fasziniert, wie friedlich sie sind. Anders als andere Primaten töten Bonobos einander nie. When two different communities of chimpanzees meet together, they normally fight. Bonobos play. Play is uh, pervasive uh, in the in the Bonobo society. It is uh, a vehicle to explore the world. Play creates strong bonded, and if we share strong bonded with your group mates, you have much more chance to survive and to get the resource you need. It is important for the development of social skills in youngsters because they acquire social competence. If you want to live in a social group, it is important, it is crucial that you perceive the emotion of the other. Buongiorno. Ciao. Palagis team will herausfinden, wie gut Bonobos Gefühle ihrer Artgenossen deuten können. Liegt hierin eine Erklärung für ihr einvernehmliches Spiel? Die Forscherinnen wollen die Bonobos mit Avataren zum Gähnen bringen. Wer gähnt, nachdem er sein Gegenüber gähnen sieht, zeigt Empathie. Bei Menschen entwickelt sich dieses Verhalten ungefähr ab dem fünften Lebensjahr. Wissenschaftler nennen das emotionale Ansteckung. If you are infected by mimicking a motor action performed by group mates, you can recreate the same emotion. So it is a, an emotional linkage between subjects. 
So in the yawning video, you uh, can find avatar yawning a lot in different position, in front, in, in the lateral position, diagonal position, and the animal respond. No. Manchmal dauert es etwas, aber im Laufe der Untersuchung ahmen die Bonobos das Gähnen viele Male nach. Brava. Liegt es an ihrer Fähigkeit, in Gesichtern zu lesen, dass sie so gut miteinander auskommen? It's difficult to understand if empathy is at the basis of play or play is at the basis of empathy, of the development of empathy. But we can say, and we, we, we have first data that suggest us that this behavior covariates. Einer gängigen Theorie zufolge bereiten sich Jungtiere spielerisch auf das Leben als Erwachsene vor. Inzwischen hat die Wissenschaft auch einen möglichen Zusammenhang zwischen Spielen und Mitgefühl entdeckt. Früher galt Spielen vor allem als das Einüben von Fertigkeiten. Kein Wunder, Kinder haben beim Hantieren mit den Werkzeugen der Erwachsenen großen Spaß. Eine aktuelle Studie zeigt jedoch, dass Kätzchen, die Jagen spielen, später nicht zwangsläufig mehr Mäuse fangen. Bärenjungen tollen mit ihren Geschwistern in der Höhle. Doch sobald sie erwachsen sind, leben sie allein. Offenbar passiert beim Spielen mehr, als auf Anhieb ersichtlich ist. Der Verhaltensökologe Jonathan Pruitt interessiert sich für eine besondere Spinnenart, sogenannte soziale Spinnen. I'm interested in social spiders because of these tiny little predators that no one knows anything about really. At least normal people don't know that they're even a thing. They're spiders that work in concert to make giant webs together, capture prey together and rear each other's offspring. And there are only about 20 species of social spider on Earth out of the maybe 50,000 species of spider that have been described so far. So it's sort of an evolutionary uh, novelty item. Pruitt und seine Kollegen erforschen vor allem eine Form der spielerischen Partnersuche bei sozialen Spinnen. Mature males will recruit to the webs of immature females who aren't mature yet, they can't mate. And these males will do their, practice their little courtship dances for the female. But then the females respond to this courtship dance by approaching the male, assuming a, a posture of receptivity. The male just puts his genitals on the outside of the female's genitals and then just sits there and over and over. There they are just attempting this copulatory posture when they could be off spending their time doing other things like getting food or laying down more silk to protect, to protect them from predators. And so I thought, oh, it's sort of like they're gaining experience for later on in life that might be pertinent, like motor skills or, or uh, social skills, social intelligence. And then later on, as I conducted more studies, I just became more and more comfortable with thinking, yeah, actually, this thing, this kind of behavior that we're seeing in a spider might just be play. Pruitt's team hat hunderte von Spinnen untersucht, um herauszufinden, warum sie sich so eigenartig verhalten. So I figured out the consequences of this behavior by manipulating these individuals' ability to engage in the behavior. I allowed some individuals to engage in almost sex in these little plastic cups, and then others that uh, were prevented from ever having those experiences. And one of the interesting things that I found is that females that had had experience engaging in play sex early on in life produced heavier egg cases later on, and that that effect scaled to how much experience they had. The more experience in play these females had, the larger their egg cases. Die spielenden Weibchen bekommen nicht nur mehr Nachwuchs, sie leben auch länger und sind weniger aggressiv. Die Wahrscheinlichkeit sinkt, dass sie ihre Partner nach der Paarung töten, was in der Welt der Spinnen nicht selten ist. When you start to consider weird sorts of behavior exhibited by lots of kinds of animals, you suddenly realize that things like play occur all over the animal kingdom and that it might not be such a sophisticated thing that's endemic or unique to people or, or mammals, that it might be something that has very deep evolutionary roots.
In Westkanada haben Forscher eine der bedeutendsten Entdeckungen über den Sinn des Spielens gemacht. Sie haben das Verhalten junger, domestizierter Ratten untersucht. Der australische Neurowissenschaftler Sergio Pellis erläutert, was diese Tiere treiben, während die meisten Menschen schlafen. They're chasing after one another. One animal tries to get up to the other one's top of the neck, and the other one will roll over to defend itself. And you see that they both take turns at doing this behavior. Die Forscher wollten herausfinden, was passiert, wenn junge Ratten keine Spielgefährten haben. In an alternative rearing condition, we have a juvenile growing up with an adult, and adult rats don't like playing with juveniles. So they will hang around together, they'll groom one another, they'll sleep next to one another, but they won't engage in rough and tumble play that the juveniles do. Hi, honey. I know, I'm sorry. Die Ratten, denen das Spielen vorenthalten wurde, entwickelten keine sozialen Fähigkeiten. Sie konnten nicht normal miteinander spielen. Nach dem Experiment wurden die Gehirne der Ratten, die nicht spielen durften, untersucht. Das für Entscheidungen und Impulskontrolle zuständige Areal war unterentwickelt. So here was a set of experiments where we actually show it is play changing the prefrontal cortex and then all these changes we see in rats that are play deprived is because of this change in the in the prefrontal cortex. Nicht nur der präfrontale Kortex unterschied sich, sondern auch die Nervenzellen. Im Vergleich zu normalen Zellen wirkten sie unstrukturiert. Das war die bedeutendste Entdeckung in Sergio Pellis Laufbahn. Doch etwas machte ihm Sorge. I grew up in a suburb in Melbourne, Australia. And about a mile straight down from my street was a river valley. Lots of greenery, lots of slopes to tumble down. Lots of places to hide, create games with your friends. It was fantastic. One of the shocking things that I found as soon as my wife and I came to Lethbridge is we saw the, the coolies, We've got a river valley, it looked fantastic. And the thing that shocked us both was, where are all the kids? My concern is that denying young children the opportunity to engage in play has led to them not getting the kinds of experiences that actually prepare them to be able to deal effectively in an unpredictable world as adults. There are several studies that track things like how frequent is depression in childhood, how frequent is psychopathology, and that's been going like this. So you have the play coming down like this and all these mental health things going up like this. An der Universität von Tennessee führen Forscher Pellis Arbeit fort. Sie untersuchen den Zusammenhang zwischen Spielen und der Fähigkeit, mit Tiefschlägen fertig zu werden. These are Syrian hamsters. They're about a month old. And at about a month old is their peak time of social play. And their social play is rough and tumble, mock aggression, where they will roll around, pin each other, and wrestle. Oh, look at them. And one way to initiate play is when that animal approaches and rolls over on his back, and they roll into a, uh, a play fight. Well, here they go, there's a push. And you can see that one animal initially ended it, ran away, and he came back, and he attacked the other, and they switched roles. Uh, it really is play fighting. Play has several functions, but one is to allow for development of the prefrontal cortex. And so what we were interested in is their ability to cope with stress in adulthood, because we know the prefrontal cortex is important for stress coping. Ein normaler erwachsener Hamster wurde in den Käfig eines anderen gesetzt. Erwachsene Hamster spielen nicht, sie sind Einzelgänger. Die Auseinandersetzung kann also heftig werden. The homecaged animal will defend its territory against the intruder and attack. So you can see they attack from the side, just like a, a play fight. But in adults, 
it's not playful, and they continue to try to uh, seriously uh, attack each other. Der Verlierer erleidet eine sogenannte soziale Niederlage. Ein normaler Hamster kommt darüber hinweg und kämpft ein andermal erneut. There we go. That's social defeat. Okay, there you go. Okay. Ein Hamster, der nicht spielen durfte, steckt die Niederlage nicht so gut weg. Bei seinem nächsten Kampf verhält er sich unterwürfig. And what we have here is a play-deprived animal uh, in his home cage, and we put in a smaller, non-threatening animal into the cage, and we allow for social interaction. And the play-deprived animals respond with a great deal of anxiety and fear. They might go and sniff the other animal and then run away. And that's our index of social anxiety. And play-deprived animals show an exaggerated social anxiety after a trauma compared to the animals that had normal social play growing up. It's kind of like an, they're impulsive. In anything in their environment, they show an exaggerated impulsive response. In this case, it's social anxiety. Ob in der Tierwelt oder auf dem Schulhof, Spielen hilft, mit den Höhen und Tiefen des Lebens fertig zu werden. Aber die Art und Weise, wie Kinder spielen, hat sich dramatisch verändert. Noch vor einer Generation brauchte es nicht viel, um Spaß zu haben. Ein Seil, ein paar Zweige. Heute verbringen Kinder in den USA weniger Zeit im Freien als jede Generation vor ihnen. Ihnen bleiben im Schnitt vier bis sieben Minuten am Tag für das freie Spiel draußen. Dem stehen siebeneinhalb Stunden vor dem Bildschirm gegenüber. Dabei entgeht den Kindern viel mehr als nur frische Luft und Bewegung. Stuart Brown erkannte die entscheidende Rolle des Spiels, lange bevor Ludologie zu einer anerkannten Wissenschaftsdisziplin wurde. Back then, uh, play was considered trivial, an extravagance that kids didn't really have to have. And slowly, the science and the understanding of play behavior itself has burgeoned over the years. We've begun to see play as a whole very differently. Brown erkannte, welche einschneidenden Folgen ein Mangel an Gelegenheit zum Spielen haben kann, als er den Fall eines Amokschützen untersuchte. I was a young professor of psychiatry at the time. We had a really intensive investigation. And as a part of that investigation, which included a three generational review of his family and personal history. We really came across the finding that he didn't play normally. And as a part of our final report, it was the suppression of play and the absence of play meant he was unable to handle properly his violent emotions. So that's what launched me an interest in play. And then I did some formal research in the Texas prison system with homicidal individuals and compared their lives with the lives of matched people and their play histories are vastly different. Brown erforschte das frühere Spielverhalten von mehr als 6000 Menschen. Seine Annahmen wurden bestätigt. Spaß zu haben ist eine überaus ernste Angelegenheit. What you find is that it's necessary for a sense of optimism, fulfillment, for a sense of competency, for a sense of an authentic self. These are all components that play produces and many more for the well-being of individuals. I'm very concerned. We have a real crisis. Nach Angaben der Weltgesundheitsorganisation ist die psychische Gesundheit junger Menschen zunehmend gefährdet. 
In Europa leidet inzwischen jedes fünfte Kind unter Entwicklungsdefiziten, emotionalen Problemen oder Verhaltensstörungen. Jedes achte Kind ist psychisch krank. Eine der führenden Verfechterinnen des Spielens im Freien ist die Kanadierin Mariana Brussoni. Ursprünglich forschte sie zur Prävention von Verletzungen, vor allem bei Kindern. Sie erkannte, Sicherheitsexperten übersahen etwas ganz Entscheidendes. Part of it was having my own kids. I think that that influences everybody to such a large extent. I actually started to read the literature as a developmental psychologist. What is the role of risk in children's lives? And what I read blew my mind. You had very different disciplines, all uh, coming to the same conclusion, that engaging in risk was actually a very important aspect of preventing injuries. It takes a lot of strength, doesn't it, guys? If you think about kids taking risks and engaging in risky play, they're learning how their body works. They're learning what they're comfortable with. They're learning um, how the world works. They're learning very fundamental risk management skills. Früher war es normal, dass Kinder unbeaufsichtigt herumtollten. Sie taten Dinge, die ihren Eltern den Atem verschlagen hätten. Ab den 80er Jahren entdeckten Kinder dann den Reiz von Videospielen. Etwa zur gleichen Zeit begannen Erwachsene, die Welt draußen als bedrohlich wahrzunehmen. Drinnen zu spielen erschien sicherer. We have smartphones in our hands all the time and we're getting bombarded by these catastrophic and cataclysmic events all the time. Um, so you feel like risk is everywhere. Okay. One of the things that parents are most worried about is their child getting kidnapped by a stranger. The likelihood of getting kidnapped by a stranger is so low that stats aren't kept. And so we have a situation where uh, parents and society has very wonky risk perceptions compared to what the data actually show. Seit zwei Jahren untersucht Brussoni, wie sich unterschiedliche Wohngegenden darauf auswirken, wie oft Kinder draußen spielen. This particular study deals with the built environment, right? So how can we include kids in the community, make sure that they're comfortable playing outside wherever it is that they want to go? Um, and there's very specific things that we can do to design a community to, to make kids want to play outside and to make parents feel comfortable letting them play outside. Die elfjährige Neve Kelly trägt für die Studie eine GPS-Uhr und einen Beschleunigungsmesser. What you see here is the data from Neve's watch from one of the instances where she would have been playing outside. And the little point that's running around is her activity over that time span. So we've got her here. She's probably at home and she's just leaving her house. And then she's going off to another bit of green space over here where she's hanging out. Um, and she's exploring quite a bit of that area. She's actually covering a good chunk of her neighborhood and spending time in lots of different types of green space. I think that I like to play more. And if you turn back the centuries, like, not centuries, the years, like 10, 20 years ago, I think I'd fit in more. Um, but I like, I kind of like, I've always liked playing outside. It's the best. Offenbar beflügelt die Freiheit, draußen aktiv zu werden, auch die Fantasie. There's a river just over there, and we there's a fort, and we pretend like we're surviving in the wilderness, and uh, we catch the salmon from the river, and we just pretend they're salmon, but they're actually pine cones. We've seen um, a generational shift in our approach to what kids are allowed to do and, and how we parent them. You gotta 
gotta be really, really, really careful. And so that's where it becomes important to point out, okay, so these are the kinds of limitations that you are putting on your child in order to avoid them, you know, being out on their own. I like playing in bushes, forests, trees, climbing. I love climbing. <laughs> Weigh it between a very, very, very unlikely event versus something that could fundamentally influence your child's health and development. Yeah. Brussonis erste Daten zeigen, Kinder und vor allem Mädchen spielen häufiger draußen, wenn sie nicht beaufsichtigt werden. The fact that we found an activity where girls are more physically active is an incredibly important um, finding. And so what is it that we can do to promote girls getting outside, playing unsupervised, rather than seeing that level off once they hit uh, early adolescence? And so all of this is suggesting that to be able to um, be independent and get out there and, and determine what they want to do is having important influences on this generation's feelings of self-competence, of resilience, of anxiety, of depression, you know, all of those really important markers of well-being. Bis die endgültigen Daten vorliegen, dauert es noch ein paar Jahre. Brussoni will eine Skala der Spielfreundlichkeit entwickeln, um die Planung kindgerechter Stadtviertel zu fördern. A lot of people know about the walkability index, right? So how walkable is a community? And part of that involves, are there sidewalks? You know, is there pedestrian infrastructure? How fast does traffic move through there? And those sorts of things. Now those are all important for kids too, but we have to think about play as well. Das Bewusstsein für den Wert des Spiels nimmt zu. Inzwischen hat es schon Einfluss auf die Stadtentwicklung einer der größten Städte der USA, Philadelphia. Die amerikanische Psychologin Kathy hirsch pasek ist davon überzeugt, dass Spielen die Grundlage für eine humanere Gesellschaft legen kann. When you play, you have to see what the other people want to do too. And as you divide up those roles, and you learn to give and take with one another, you're learning precisely the rules you need to learn to become part of a civil and democratic society in the future. So my biggest fear is that we're losing play environments, we're turning everything into digital solo, and that we need to bring real play back, play in nature, play in the environment, learning how to cope and learning how to deal with other humans. Hirsch-Pasek ist Expertin für die frühkindliche Entwicklung. Ihr zufolge wirkt sich Spielen positiv auf den Schulerfolg und das weitere Leben aus. I always talk about play as a liberal arts education for young children. You know, you don't think about it, but you're studying sociology and you're creating community and you're learning physics and you're understanding spatial and mathematics. Play is very, very important. hirsch Pasek's team überlegte, wie sie Spielangebote in den öffentlichen Raum integrieren lassen. Sie begannen mit einer Bushaltestelle in einem ärmeren Viertel. So we thought, Maybe you could change an average bus stop into a playful learning environment. What if you could redesign hopscotch? So instead of normal hopscotch, it actually asked you to put down two feet where you see one and one where you see two. Could that teach impulse control, flexibility, memory and attention just by playing a new game? Nach ihrer Ansicht sollten Spielangebote grundsätzlich in die Stadtplanung mit einbezogen werden. What would that look like if architects could build buildings and build everyday environments so that they were imbued with playful learning? Well, we're actually trying that 
and it's happening around the world. Norwegen ist ein Land von beeindruckender Schönheit. Die Einwohner sind sehr naturverbunden. Doch selbst hier ist das traditionelle Spiel auf dem Rückzug. Alan Sunsetter will das ändern. Spielplatz um Spielplatz. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. How are you, Mariana? Sie arbeitet mit Mariana Brussoni in Kanada zusammen. I wanted to tell you about uh, our project. And that oh, yeah. we, yeah, and we have uh, now uh, mapped all our childcare centers, uh, both uh, indoor and outdoor environments. You have done all 80 children? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Brussoni und Sunsetter gestalten Spielplätze in acht Kinderbetreuungseinrichtungen neu, um sie spannender zu machen. Playgrounds here uh, started to be changed. Everything was uh, kind of shrunk in a way because they were supposed to be uh, more safe. Die Planungen beruhen auf Sunsetters wegweisender Forschungsarbeit. Sie hat als Pionierin die Merkmale des riskanten Spiels herausgearbeitet. In preschools, we know that one in ten experience an injury during a year. Uh, and some Norwegians even say that that's uh, too little, that's too few injuries. Als eine der ersten Forscherinnen fragte Sandsetter die Kinder selbst, was sie spannend finden. Vorschulkinder, wie in diesem Waldkindergarten, sprechen dabei Dinge an, die in Vergessenheit geraten sind. Usually, if you ask people, where did you like to play or what did you play when you were young, most of the time they mention being in the outdoors, close to nature. Har du superskor? Da. Det er det lille. So it's kind of um, interesting that a lot of parents don't let their own children do the same thing. We've had this kind of preschool for many, many years, but the last decade, uh, it's been growing in number. And I think that's more kind of a reaction to a society where a lot of our life is, yeah, we're still spending more time indoors, um, you know, all, all uh, digital uh, devices and t TV and things like that. Play is the most important thing for children. Playing is children's most important way of being, of communicating, and also social skills, being together with other children, problem solving. Play is where they learn. What makes risky play different from other kinds of play is that it is a chance for getting injured. That is probably the thing that we are afraid of too. It uh, includes in uncertainty, maybe something that you are a little bit uh, scared about doing, but still it's testing out their environment and themselves. We 
you can look at risky play as a, as a way to habituate your fear. So true play where children naturally engage in climbing and engage in testing their ability to manage heights. They are actually learning how to handle it. Then it's nothing to fear anymore. And then you are not as afraid. We see that it's the ones that never got the chance to experience climbing. Those are the ones that are more represented in the population with uh, a phobia for heights. When I started doing this research, uh, I read a lot about risky play and it was also always uh, from the adult's perspective and I wanted to talk to the children. It's really something that they are experts in. The striking thing was that uh, all of them talked about bodily feelings. They usually said it tickles in my tummy, my heart goes like boing, 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 and all of it was very positive but still they talked about the fear being there or the anxiety being there because they did something that was scary their word of it in norwegian was skummert uh, arti and directly translated to to english that is scary funny sansetter gehört zu einer wachsenden schar von experten in deren Augen Kinder ein Recht darauf haben, riskante Spiele zu erleben. I'm very happy for having parents that allowed me to explore and to climb trees and to jump down from heights and to build things and crawl under things and all those things that children want to do. Aber vielleicht ist es bald zu spät. Die heutige Elterngeneration besitzt selbst kaum positive Erinnerungen an das Spielen in der Natur. If they don't have that frame of reference, it's much harder for them to realize what's missing. Because this started in the late 80s, those people are now parents. And we could have a collective intergenerational kind of memory fog that wipes out that idea as kind of a normal part of childhood. Traditionally, kids were let free, uh, particularly elementary school age kids, whereas now there isn't a sense of that sense of freedom. And I think with that, there's a huge loss. Eine Rückkehr zum Spiel im Freien erlaubt eine Rückbesinnung auf die enge Verbindung von Mensch und Tier. Wir sollten erkennen, wie wichtig seine positiven Effekte für die emotionale Reife sind, bevor es zu spät ist. We have an industrial revolution background where productivity and being honored and loved for your personal productivity is more important than your happiness or your fulfillment. So I think we've got an uphill fight to get play into the consciousness of the culture. When I'm engaging in play, or I watch children engaging in play, or I watch a, a kitten engaging in play, I think to myself, you know, this is, this is not just fluff. This is something that this animal has evolved to do, that serves some purpose that is a rather significant component of this thing's life. When you protect children from every possible danger, they're not going to be very resilient or very able to cope. Just like animals have to be prepared to deal with uncertainties, so do people. All mammals have basically the same brain structure. We've now made the connection that lack of peer play translates into a not normally developed prefrontal cortex. So now all of a sudden you look at the kid scenario and you go, well, if it's true on rats, maybe those correlations in children are in fact causal. And my concern has always been, is this a good thing to prevent young children 
from freely choosing to engage in whatever kind of play they want with their peers. Play is more important now than it has ever been. But in a world where information is doubling every two and a half years, we need critical thinkers, we need creative innovators, and we need children who have the confidence to learn from failure and to persevere so that they create new things. And I think play, the sandbox, incorporates all of these. The most important thing we can do is just get out of the way and let them play. Let them play how they choose, provide uh, an, an environment they feel comfortable playing with, and then just get out of the way. And let them figure it out for themselves. They'll amaze you.